The Accountant General of the Federation says the Iboru Ludes have been disbursed to the Delta State government. Confusion over how the money will be utilized. And the recent high profile defections in River State get our attention tonight. We take a look at what has become a major political scenario in a volatile River State. Hello everyone and welcome to Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Shane Wakibalo, Channels Television's global headquarters here in Lagos, Nigeria. Let's begin tonight with what will become a very fast-paced program because of the information and some of the stories that we are telling you tonight. Well, there appears to be some kind of confusion over the repatriated Ibori loot from the United Kingdom. Contrary to what is being in the public space, the Accountant General of the Federation says recover loot from former Governor James Ibori has been paid to Delta State Government. The Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idri, says recoveries are made by the federal government on behalf of states and insists that any recovery arising from looted funds from a particular state go directly to the state. He said that this is when he appeared before the House Committee on Recover Loot. Meanwhile, the committee is querying and allegedly missing 5 million euros from recovered funds by the federal government. Recoveries are for state governments, specific state governments. I know there was a time recovery was made on behalf of, is it Plateau State? There was one for Bayelsa, there was one for different states, if Delta. So such recoveries go specifically to those states that for which let, they are. Let, let's give an example. I mean, there's something trending. The recovery of um, Ibori loot. Where it, will it be paid into? It was paid to the state. Is it uh, Delta or yeah, Delta State? It was paid to Delta State. But that's contrary to the information that it was. The, but no, 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 no. Used for no, any recovery, in... Honorable Chair, Honorable Committee, any recovery that is, I mean, arising from looted funds from a particular state goes to the state. The state governors will not even allow this to fly. You know, Honorable. You know they will not. They will take federal government to court for holding their money. So we, we, we don't joke and we don't play with that. We pay them their money. Well, that's very much uh, on the opposite of what the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Attorney General of the Federation told us on this program. But we get some clarity on that and confirmation either from the Accountant General's office and the Attorney General's office so that we can get clarity on where the money really is. In fact, from Delta State Government, just stay with us right here on the program. We have more to chew tonight, but let's check out some of your political roundup stories. President Mohamedou Buhari has called on the international community to support Chad in their transition from military to democratic governance, which is scheduled within 18 months. The president said this at the opening of the extraordinary summit of heads of state and government of the Lake Chad Basin Commission. River State Governor Yesam Wike says his administration will not agree to any form of judicial autonomy that will give the judiciary the right to physically present and defend its budget before the State House of Assembly. He says allowing the judiciary to independently present its budget is usurping the constitutional powers of the executive to plan and implement the expenditure of the state. I have joined the ongoing national strike as the issues in contention do not apply at all to River State where the judiciary is enjoying and continues to enjoy financial autonomy and much improved staff welfare. Ahead of the November 2021 governorship election in a number of states, factional national chairman of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, Edozi Njoku, says the leadership crisis rocking the party is not a do or die affair, but rather a family matter that will be resolved amicably in no time. We are doing whatever we can to reconcile. Then we will all reconcile. Africa is a very close to its family. Forget that this crisis has been going on for a long time. And the Enugu State Governor, Ifan Uguain, has gone for an on-the-spot assessment of the Wola Police Division following an attack on the division by yet-to-be-identified gunmen earlier this morning. 
police said the hoodlums came to the station in their numbers, opened fire on police operatives on duty, but were vehemently resisted, and after a gun duel, several of the assailants escaped with bullet injuries. But four police operatives sustained severe gunshot wounds and later confirmed dead in the hospital, while parts of the station were set ablaze by the assailants. So let's also tell you that President Muhammad Buhari today received some APC South US leaders led by former Lagos Governor Bola Tinobu, the APC national leaders, after the meeting with the president spoke about the unity of the nation. Take a listen to him. What, what was that? What, what is the agitation? And where is it coming from? We have already made our position clear that we want a one united, peaceful, stable country, productive and promising. Nigeria is not just a, a, a rat village, it's a nation. I want to keep it as one. So let's get to the business of tonight. And uh, it's about the very interesting politics in River State. Two men, perhaps uh, names, their names will come up more often in this conversation because the rivalry between the former governor and the minister for transportation and the incumbent governor, Yusuf Wiki, has become a major factor. So River State in Nigeria's south-south region is perhaps one of the most volatile politically and things appear to be getting intense ahead of the 2023 election. Major political players in River State, both from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and the opposition or Progressive Congress, APC, have begun migrations across party lines. Some of the cross affections that have happened over the weekend when two former state chairmen of APC, Dr. Davies Ikaya and Igo Aguma, led all the chieftains of the opposition uh, party, to the uh, PDP. On the other hand, two former commissioners in uh, Governor Yusuf Wike's administration had on the 16th of May 2021 defected to the, PD, uh, to the APC from the PDP. Let me show you perhaps some of uh, uh, the names of those who have moved across these party lines. So uh, some from the PDP to the APC and on the other hand is from the APC to the PDP. So you can see that on your screen. And some of their titles are there. From Davis Ikaya, about two former APC chairmen in River State abandoned or dumped the APC to the PDP. And interestingly also, two cabinet, former cabinet members in Governor Wike's uh, government have also left the PDP and moved to the APC. There is a long list on the, on the left All right. Governor Yusuf Wike uh, who spoke when he was receiving some of the APC chieftains into the PDP. I'd like you to listen to what he has to say before I introduce my guest tonight. You're a minister. I have said I be the first son of Buhari. Now, you are a minister of transportation. Not be so. Not be so. Now, let me tell you, DG Nimasana came. He visited me. He said, River State, after Lagos, is where they make money. And I asked him, this money, what are they make? Which one will we don't get out of this? He said, make an office. He said, they don't get office for River State. Nimasa. I said, okay, on a carry the cabotage department waiting for River State, on a carry and go Lagos. We will be second, though. To carry second, now, now, batting. Nabati, we get minister. Ask him, what did they happen for Potakot uh, Wharf? Did it work? Did it work? If you river to allow Potakot Wharf, you know, give our you job. You know, give our you job. If you allow owner to the portion optimally, they don't get job. No, be minister of transport, where be? MPA don't that. No, be so. Nimasa don't that. No, be so. Why our boss don't go work? Why our boss don't go work? He said, no job, no job. Meanwhile, he's there for position to create a job. As minister, what do you bring for River State? Well, 
Governor Wilke there, speaking largely in uh, Pigeon English, perhaps I've been able to pick some of the things that he said. Um, I have also David Sikaya, who also spoke, but I'll allow you to listen to him in a moment. But let me introduce to you my guest tonight, who is a former commissioner for uh, Chieftaincy and Community Affairs and a former commissioner for special duties, former member of the River State House of Assembly from 1999 to 2007, when he was in the PDP, now he's in the APC. Prince John Bazia joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bazia, for your time tonight. Make us to understand, because I know... Thank you very much. A uh, few months ago, you were a member of the PDP. Now you are a card carrying member of the APC. What is this that is happening in, uh, the, uh, in River State politics? Can you make us understand what exactly is going on? Good evening, Nigerians, and good evening, viewers. Uh, well, uh, you, you know, it's characteristic of uh, uh, the governor of River State to behave the way he's behaving when a man lacks vision. So all you hear is name calling. He will even attribute things that has nothing to do with the person whose name is being called because he lacks vision. He does not know what to have offer. Uh, he was talking about the, the pot. Uh, Amechi had nothing to do with that. Those things were in place before Amechi came. Wike was chairman of local government area. He was chief of staff in his administration. So he knows that it wasn't Amechi's responsibility. It wasn't his excellency's responsibility to do that. So it's, it's just about name calling. But let me quickly say this. There's a huge difference between Wike and the Amechi we are talking about. You know, sometimes when I hear people talk about uh, certain projects that Amechi started, I wonder. You see, visionary leaders have big dreams. And these people are people with small dreams. You go to Dubai, you see all those things. Somebody tells you he wants to build tomorrow, today. Those are tall dreams. Those are big dreams. That's the kind of stuff Amechi is made up of. He has an agency for sustainable development. Because if you don't develop the man in society, of course, where are you going to? And scholarships were given to people to go to overseas and all that. Even the moral rail they talk about, maybe we'll talk about that some other day. But when they go to Dubai, they see things like that. That's the big vision. Those are the kind of things we are talking about. And then to talk about those who are the campaign from the APC to the PDP, let me quickly say this. You know, one of those that are well respected here is Nelson Mandela in Africa and in the world. And there was something he said about leadership. He said, first and foremost, you have to be honest with yourself. So once you're not honest with yourself as a leader, then there's a problem. Now, these leaders that we are talking about that defected to the PDP were modes. They were modes in the APC. Every one of them that has decamped so far were modes. I was of the PDP. So I know they used to come and bring information. How do you say you are a leader in a political party and you still betray that same political party that you say you are leading? So where, where's the honesty? Where's the integrity? Mr. Bazia, How do you take Ma your Mr. own Bazia. party to court? Okay, so you and, and also... So apologies, by those please. that are outside of your party. Apologies if I yes. quickly cut in. You said those who left the APC for the PDP, they are most because they come to you when you're in the PDP to give information about the APC. Yes, but you also they, left they the did. APC for the PDP. Good, good. Like I've always said, in Nigeria here, politics is about interest. It's like international relations when it comes to United States of America because there are no clear cut you know, political divides as to ideological differences. In short, the APC, the PDP, from how it came about, is about the same person, the same kind of things. So no one can say, oh, because I'm ideologically 
leaning to this. That's why I found myself this area. But the thing is that you have two interests at place, at play at every time as a leader. Your own parochial and selfish interest and the collective aspirations of your people. When you're able to marry this and put the collective aspirations of your people ahead of your own parochial interest, then you're a leader. Okay, so Mr. Bazia, it's a good point for us to, sorry, apologies. Uh, we have to take a commercial break now. But when we come back, uh, you said that those who left the APC for the PDP are most, uh, who gave information to the uh, PDP when they were in APC. But some of these people are chieftains of the party from our chairman. But it's also speaking about some of you who left the PDP for the APC. I'll allow you to listen to what Mr. Ikanya has to say. But this is going to be when we return from the break. And I'd like to get your reaction in all of that. Join us again, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us right here on Politics Union Channel Television. John Bazia, a former commissioner under Governor Yinsung Wike in the PDP, has moved to the APC. Before we went on that break, Mr. Bazia, you told us that those who left the APC were moles because they used to give information. Then, if you look at some of them, the people that defected, they are heavyweights, big wigs in the APC. And moving to the PDP, the question, politically speaking, for those who are aware and savvy, is that what then is left of the APC after these people have left? The, the difference between those who left the APC to the PDP and those of us, people like me, who left the PDP to the APC is very clear. I would say this. I wasn't a mole in PDP. If I see that my own interest and the interests of my people are not adequately represented, the first thing I will do as a man of honor is to resign. And then I can begin to criticize them. But the difference between us and them is that they stayed in their party to be molds. In short, rivers people should look at these people. Nigerians should look at these people. They should have nothing to do with them because they lack integrity. You can't be in a party you don't like and you are conniving with the opposition to undermine your party, to make sure you lose the election. So where's the honesty? So, because Mr. Honesty Bazia, give us an understanding. Like uh, I said. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, quickly. Give us an understanding of what is it like working uh, with Governor Wicke. You said as a commissioner, but now you're speaking against well. me. Well, <laughs> see, let me tell you, I've worked with a lot of people. And the good thing about me is that I have worked with uh, His Excellency Right Honorable Rutumi Amechi while he was speaker. And I've worked with, uh, you know, uh, the governor, Wiki. And I must tell you, all those who are with him, they know what they're going through. But you've been seeing him on TV. You've been seeing him, you know, the way he's been behaving in Nigeria. Uh, sometimes you, 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 you'll be baffled if uh, that is an enlightened and uh, an educated mind, the way he carries himself. He forgets the exalted position, the office of the governor. He behaves like a thug. In short, in but, his but this is the, council, this is the, I was sorry, one of those... Uh, this is the man who appointed you into office. But you knew this. Why did you take exactly. up the, what did he, why did you take up the exactly. appointment? So why did you take up the appointment let, let if you knew on. this about him? Before then, I haven't worked with him. I worked with him when I was commissioner with him. And of course, I was in the PDP. I wasn't one of those who left the PDP for APC. I take my time. I believe in what I believe in. And at the point where I feel that I'm no longer needed there because what I believe and what they are doing uh, is not a par. At that point, I can leave. So I stayed on. I haven't worked with him before. While I was in the House of Assembly, he was uh, local government chairman. 
So we didn't work together. I worked with His Excellency, Right Honorable Rotomi Amechi, and I was his spokesman. You know, there are certain things I don't want to say here because they were the ones who ganged up against those that ordinarily would have worked with uh, His Excellency Rotomi Amechi. But I can tell you this because I've tasted both of them. I can tell you that there's just no way you can compare Amechi with uh, Governor Wike. It's just not possible. I mean, we are, we are looking at somebody who is celebrant, somebody who is visionary. You can see what he's doing in the, in, in the, in the uh, transportation ministry, Ministry of Transport. You can see what he's doing with the rail line. Let me tell you, every industrialized nation of the world, they had something to do with rail. Means of transportation must be there. You evacuate produce. But one of the allegations, uh, uh, Dr. Bazia, just in, apologies. In, in, in one, of, one of the things the governor said is that um, the, the minister, according to him, the allegation is that he has not brought any of those uh, into Brevo State to benefit the people of his state. Then he forgets it. Let's see, let me be very honest with you. You know, sometimes they misplace facts. Just like he has his own commissioner. I was commissioner with him. In short, in his own case, it's worse. He, he's so overbearing. In short, he even quarrels with knowledgeable people, those who will be able to contribute positively. He feels he knows it all, but when you allow him to even express himself, he has difficulty. How can you know it all and you can't express what you know? Because it's out of what you know that you say. Okay, so, so like, I, I, I said earlier on that we're going so, to so just the, apologize. The point I'm making is... Yeah, uh, apologies. Because yeah. I wanted us to hear also what David Sikaya said, one of those, the cha former chairman sure, of the APC. I'd like you to listen to what he said and uh, we, will, we, will, we will hear your reaction from you. Haven't seen what you are doing in River State. Haven't seen how my dream of APC has been messed up in River State to the extent that we no longer even have an executive. Your Excellency, I decided that my father used to say that if you leave your house, and you embark on a journey, and on the way you miss your road, that the best thing to do is at least, since you don't know where to go again, go back to your house where you came from. So I came to a crossroad. Uh, so you heard Ms. Uh, Mr. Ikaya there, a chairman, of the APC, former chairman of the APC, moving to the PDP. So, on a final note, give us an understanding of uh, what made you leave the PDP, one. Secondly, give us a sense of what is happening on the ground. This is about 2023, isn't it? And PDP will tell you in River State that Rivers is PDP and there's no way for APC. Those are some of the words they use. I don't think that all that is correct. First of all, let me tell you about the things he's saying there. The man who was uh, APC chairman was not actually a member of the PDP. Because I think that we should be grateful to those who have helped us. When benevolent spirits crack our cadence for us, we should appreciate God and be thankful. Okaya was of another political party. And when His Excellency Chubikero Tumi Amechi, right honorable, became governor, he decided to make him a commissioner. So when he's saying that he's going back to his party, that's not true. <laughs> I have been of the PDP. I was a member of River State House of Assembly. As a member of the PDP, he was not one of us. So when the, when the governor brought him as a commissioner for special duties. That's when he left his party and joined the PDP. So let him be frank, let him say the truth. So PDP was not his home. That's that. 
When I decamped, I actually made it very clear. I said that the governor was beginning to run the state as if we were conquered people, as if River State was his father's property. And I don't find that funny. It's democracy. You can't have a dictator as a governor. You can see recently, they are talking about autonomy for the judiciary. You can see what he's saying, tongue in cheek. How do you say you've been given freedom, autonomy to the judiciary? And the same you who is saying that is fighting that the judiciary shouldn't have autonomy. You can have those kind of people as leaders. All right. You know, like yeah, obviously out of time, say, uh, Dr. Bazia, and we need to go now. But I must sincerely thank you for your time. Dr. John Bazia, former commissioner under Governor Weekend, a former member of the River State House of Assembly. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you very much. And I think the APC now is better than before because the modes are getting out. We pray that all of them will go out so that the APC can be APC and work for the good of reverse people. We oh. have visionary leaders in the APC. We indeed need to go. That's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shion Kimale. Bye-bye.